Hi, I'm Kent. Over the course of my channel, I've done a variety of tests adding things into my slip to try and get different colors in my clay body. So early on, I bought some mason stain and added that in varying percentages. And I cast a whole bunch of pots with black mason stain, blue mason stain, and yellow mason stain. After that, I had the slip looked over, so I mixed up some different colors. So I made a greenish color, and then I made a darker yellow and a darker blue. And then finally I had all the trimmings that wound up in an olive color. More recently, I've been trying to get speckled clay out of my regular slip. So I bought a couple of ingredients and added that and cast a bunch of test tiles to see if I could get a speckled effect in my clay. One of the other things I'm interested in doing is getting a darker clay body. So again, I know you can buy different clay bodies with different colors, but slips, it's more limited, especially with the supply constraints today. I wanted the control of being able to do exactly what I wanted. I think partially this is being inspired by Heath Ceramics, which really was my kind of gateway into pottery very early on. Heath actually went and designed her own clay bodies. So I want to try a darker clay body, and I found relatively little online on how to do that. But I think I found potentially one recipe that I want to try out. So my first ingredient is red iron oxide. So this should make a reddish clay body in an oxidation firing, which is what I'm doing. I'm using my electric kiln. I think in a reduction firing, it'll actually turn darker. But I am not doing that. And I didn't see much for slips and clay bodies, but I did see in glazes that some people add cobalt into their glaze, and that will result in a darker kind of blackish color as well. This is cobalt carbonate. So my plan is to mix up different ratios of these two ingredients and then add it into my slip and see what the resulting clay body turns out to be. So I made up a plan, let me walk you through this. So I'm going to shoot for 4% by dry weight of clay of my additives here. And this is informed a little bit by my Mason Stains experiments. 4% it was actually starting to really show up. I'm gonna assume this is gonna act somewhat similar, but really don't know. So that's by dry weight. Um, my test tile molds, which I have hanging out over here, hold 100 grams of wet slip. That's about 70 grams of dry clay. So times the 0.04, we get 2.8 grams. So I need 2.8 grams of additives to get a 4% by weight addition. All right, so 2.8 grams. Now I wanna try different ratios. I'm going to try different ratios of the cobalt to iron. So I want a ratio of zero to 10, so this will be all iron. 1 to 9, 2 to 8, and 3 to 7. So each of these columns will be a different test tile I'll make. I'm going to make four of them. So first, I'm just going to try the straight up iron oxide. So that'll be 2.8 grams of just the iron oxide. Then I'm going to do one part of cobalt to nine parts of iron oxide, and then two parts, and then three parts of cobalt, respectively, to eight and seven parts of iron oxide. In my previous test with speckles, I just continually added the amounts of my materials, but since I'm actually changing the ratios, I'm going to do these one by one. All right, I think I've got everything set out, so we're ready. So I have my two ingredients. I have my high precision scale and my low precision scale. I have my mask. I've got an empty solo cup so I can mix the slip up in. I have my test tile molds. I have a couple of stir sticks to be able to measure out my ingredients and to stir up the result. So going back to my sheet, this one is just the iron oxide. I need 2.8 grams of that. All right, 2.79, that's close enough. So that all goes into here. Let's go ahead and mix it all up. All right, that looks pretty well mixed up to me. So here's the mold, and all of this slip should fit in just fine. Perfect, just a tiny bit left over. All right, let me grab the cobalt, and we will do the next one. I'm not gonna bother rinsing this out since I'm just gonna be continuing to increase the ratios. All right, so I want another 100 grams, and then I will do the next ratio. Back to this cheat sheet. For the iron oxide, I need, it's the bottom row, 2.52 grams. 
Okay, 2.57, we'll call that close enough. All right, and now the cobalt. Cobalt, the cobalt carbonate's a really cool purple color. All right, same deal, I'm gonna mix this up really well. All right, and same thing, we'll go ahead and pour all this into there. Next up is two parts of cobalt to eight parts of iron. So we need 0.56 grams of the cobalt and 2.24 grams of the iron. And the iron oxide was getting everywhere, so I'm gonna go ahead and put on a glove. And here are the four test tiles. These are getting close to bone dry, but not quite yet there. The color is still a little bit mottled. I think that's because they aren't evenly dried yet. So this is the zero, one, two, and three parts of cobalt to iron, respectively. So this one is all iron oxide, and this one has three parts of the cobalt to seven parts of the iron oxide. And these two are the ones in the middle. So all of these have a ratio total of 4% added to the dry weight by weight of the clay inside of them. And you guys are in luck. There's actually a bonus tile. Uh, the first one I measured, I got wrong by a factor of 10. This one has 0.4% iron oxide by dry weight of clay and nothing else in it. So we'll see how that one turns out as well. Next up for these will be the bisque. At that point, I think I will put my clear glaze on half of the tile and see what it looks like glazed. And the bottom half I'll leave raw. So these just came out of the bisque fire and they're starting to show a little bit of variation in color. Of course, these aren't fired at their final temperature yet, so who knows what they're really gonna look like at the end. And let's not forget about my bonus tile. We'll let these dry and the next glaze firing, I'll go ahead and put these in. All right, and here are the results of the test firing. So this one is just the iron oxide. This is one part of the cobalt to nine parts of the iron, two to eight and three to seven. And then hanging back here is the lower percentage of just iron, and I have a reference test tile just for comparison. So you tell me, what do you think? Which of these do you like the best? So I was going for a grayish type of clay body, and I think I've achieved that. In fact, I think I overachieved that. One of the surprises is just adding the iron oxide to my clay body. I actually really like this. This was really just added for completeness sake in terms of my test, but I'm glad I did it because I, I like this effect. In fact, I think I want to probably try varying just the amount of iron oxide in the clay probably as a separate test. In terms of the grays, I, I think that worked out well. This one's actually almost blue gray. It's, it's very, very rich. I think this was probably closer to the color I was shooting for, or maybe even something a little bit lighter. So I think I have some more tests to do here as well. So I think it might be interesting to maybe try these at a lower percentage. So all of these are at 4% by weight added. Maybe down closer to 1% or 2% would be interesting. These are extremely rich and maybe a little bit overwhelming. And I think I want a slightly lighter shade of the gray. And in terms of happy accidents, when I was mixing this one up at 4%, I accidentally got off by a factor of 10 and did this one. And for comparison, here is just my regular base glaze. And you can see that the 0.4% did almost nothing to it. There's a little bit of like the iron flux you can see inside of it, but otherwise nothing. 
It's a different top glaze. Um, the glaze I put on these is my house base glaze, and it gets kind of this cloudy white when it goes on too thick. It may also be reacting to some of the ingredients I've added into the slip. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, you tell me, do you like this effect? The intention was to go on clear, but no, some, some of it kind of looks a little bit interesting. This in contrast is a new glaze I'm trying out. Be on the lookout for that in an upcoming video. So I think overall this is a really cool way to start getting some different effects out of my clay body itself. Definitely have some more experimenting to do, but I'm happy with these results. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching.